My name is Pierre Tager. I'm the product manager for CQ Cloud Manager. And today I want to take you on a tour of our new online application that allows you to provision, manage, and meter your CQ clusters in the Amazon AWS public cloud. So first, uh, let me sign in with my Adobe ID. You can get an Adobe ID on adobe.com if you don't have one already. When you first log into the application, uh, you land in your dashboard of your CQ clouds. So this dashboard will show you all the CQ clusters that you have previously created with their status. So here, for instance, I have two running clusters with a green uh, icon, and I have a few more that are stopped with the red icon. For adding an additional cloud, I simply click on the plus icon, and I, I can enter my parameters of my new CQ cloud and hit add. And we'll do this in a few minutes. The next section is the packages section. So on this packages section, you have a dashboard of your packages that you have uh, either uh, selected from our marketplace and installed on your CQ cloud, or if you have just uh, marked as liked uh, because you want to get back to it later and install it on one of your CQ clusters. So to add a new cluster, you simply click on plus. It takes you to our marketplace and here you can browse through the different uh, categories that we have available and then select a package. Simply hit install to add it to one of your CQ clouds. And also we'll do this in a few minutes. The third section is the services section. This is your dashboard for all the services that you have configured. So these services can be of different types. So to add a new service, you simply click on the plus icon, and then you are presented with uh, three choices of categories. You have the cloud providers, where we have Amazon, which we support today, and we have also BlueLock, and we'll be adding other providers such as Rackspace in, in the near future. So to add your Amazon account, you simply click on Select, and you have a dialog box to enter your Amazon credentials uh, so that you can use those credentials to provision, to provision your CQ clusters on Amazon. Second category is your Adobe CQ WEM uh, licenses. So to add an additional license that you would have purchased from Adobe, you click on Select, and then you simply upload your license here by uploading a .properties file. And then finally, we have uh, the Adobe Digital Marketing Suite category, where we currently have uh, Site Catalyst that is uh, supported. And in the coming soon, we have Search and Promote and Test and Target. And here, in a similar fashion, to add Site Catalyst to one of your CQ cluster, you simply click on Select, enter your credentials on this dialog, and then hit Create. So let's go back now to the cloud section and we're going to add a new CQ cloud. So I'm going to click on the plus icon right here and then I'm going to give it uh, a name. This is going to be the DNS name of the CQ cluster that I'm going to start on Amazon. Next, I'm going to enter my admin password for my CQ platform. Then I need to choose the cloud provider when I want to provision this uh, CQ cluster. So here I only have one choice, which is my Amazon key. And then uh, I can choose from multiple licenses that I have purchased. So I'm going to pick the CQ training uh, key. Then I'm going to click Add. So in a few seconds, uh, I'm going to provision now a CQ cluster on Amazon. So here uh, it's going uh, very fast because we're using uh, hot spares, which are warm-up machines that are pre-started uh, and then configured 
upon request. Uh, usually it could take up to 10 to 20 minutes for a CQ cluster to be fully running on Amazon. So here we go. Uh, that new cluster is now uh, ready. So I'm going to click to show you what has been provisioned on Amazon. So if you see here, we have three VMs, three virtual machines that have been created. One is the dispatcher, which uh, has the role of uh, load balancing the traffic between the different published nodes and uh, serves also as a cache. We have the author node that is used to create and uh, update content and then um, push that content uh, when ready to the published nodes. And then finally, we have one published node, which is where your web application is running. Right now, we only have uh, one published node running. <clears throat> As you can see to the right, we have monitoring information, which is uh, provided to you. This is all real-time information about the CPU utilization, the memory usage, and the disk usage. So you can keep an eye of what's going on. Up on the right, you have your different actions that are available. Uh, you can pause your CQ cluster and that will uh, put your CQ cluster in hibernation mode, which means that it will release all the CPU resources but keep all the storage so that all the data on disk is uh, uh, re retained. The next action is uh, the stop. Uh, when stopping a CQ cluster, it releases all the resources, including CPU and storage, and only um, keeps the backups in case you have configured backups for this cluster and these backups have been successful. Last, we have a more drop-down where uh, you can add uh, additional published nodes. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to add another published node. And as you can see, we'll have uh, another published node showing at the bottom of the list. Again, uh, this happened so quickly because we're using the hot spare capability. Otherwise, it would take about 10 to 20 minutes. You also have the ability to add another author node for uh, enabling failover capability at the author tier. The backup action allows you to configure your backups. And so you can configure your backups uh, in terms of the retention copies that you want to keep. So you can choose 10, for instance. When the backup should start. So you can say every night at uh, 10 p.m and then uh, how frequently you want the backups to occur. So let's say every 24 hours, and then I'm going to hit update. And that will you know, start a, uh, a job on a daily basis to uh, trigger those backups. And then finally, once you have backups, you can go into the restore dialog to choose one of the backups that you have uh, created and choose one of those to uh, restore your CQ cluster. We have other areas in this uh, section. One is the activity tab, which gives you everything that happened on your uh, cluster. So this is a good way of uh, finding uh, when you started it, when you paused it, when you added uh, packages. And we also have the uh, list of all the installed packages that uh, are um, installed on your CQ cluster. So here by default, we have a list of packages that are pre-installed for you but any new package that you would have installed would also show up here. And also gives you the uh, list of the machine on which those packages have been installed, as well as the status, uh, whether the installation was successful. So going back now to my uh, cluster, I can go to the author node by clicking on the go to author button. So that uh, gives me access to log in to my CQ5 platform now running on Amazon. So I'm going to log in with my admin password. So you have now access to the full CQ5 platform. So everything you are uh, familiar with uh, on premise using your CQ5 platform is also available from your CQ5 platform running in the cloud. There are no end restriction uh, on any of the features that uh, you are familiar with from your CQ5 platform running on-premise. Going back to Cloud Manager, I can also click on Go to Publish to see the public-facing uh, site that uh, 
the published nodes are uh, configured to uh, to serve. So here by default, we show our um, Geometrics Outdoor template site, which ships with CQ5. And you can use this uh, template site to um, create your own by changing you know, the look and feel and the content uh, of, this, uh, of this site. So going back to Cloud Manager, let's uh, discover the other uh, sections. So we have the Packages sections. So we're going to pick a package now and we're going to install it. So I'm going to pick the Twitter package, for instance. Uh, so on clicking on the Twitter icon, I go to the detail page for that uh, package. I can see different uh, kind of information about the package, what uh, version the package is, uh, which version of CQ it requires, and some uh, other information. And so when I want to install this package, I just simply click on Install gives me a list of the CQ clusters that are running on which I can install that package. So I'm going to install it on all three running CQ clusters and click install. So I can go back to my uh, clusters now and click on the latest CQ cloud that uh, we've started and then check the installed packages and verify that my Twitter package is right here it has been successfully installed on the Author 1 node, the Publish 1, and the Publish 2. So if I wanted to add uh, another package, uh, I can go back to the Marketplace and look at the list of uh, packages that are available, browse through the different uh, categories that are presented and then finally pick one of the packages and install it in the same manner. Exactly the same process. Finally let's look at the services section. So uh, this is your dashboard for all the services that you have configured. And so um, you have, at the very least, uh, your Amazon AWS service account that you have to configure. And you also have your uh, CQ license that you have to configure so that you can start your CQ cloud. So uh, to add a new service, I simply click on plus, And then I select uh, which provider I want to configure enter the information for that provider inside that dialog and that information comes directly from your Amazon account such as your access key, your secret key and your key pair file name which is a .pem file which allows you to SSH into your instances running on Amazon. To add a new license you simply click on the Adobe CQ Web tab, click on CQ Web Experience Management and that gives you the dialog to import your dot properties file that you would get from Adobe upon purchasing CQ. And then finally, uh, you can go into the Adobe DMS category, select Site Catalyst. So if you have an account with Site Catalyst, you can enter it here. So you can leverage it on your uh, website to track traffic and user experience. Finally, if I go back to the services dashboard, I can click on any of those services and it will give me some metering data, which means I will see every cluster on which this service has been configured and installed and how long that service has been running on that particular cluster. For uh, my Amazon account, I can also click on a particular CQ cluster and see uh, how much uh, hours, instance hours, each of the machines have run, as well as the amount of uh, memory and storage configured for that particular cluster. Same type of information for my licenses. I can see all the different CQ clusters on which uh, I'm using that uh, particular license. And upon clicking on one, cluster, which let's see the one I've just started, we can actually um, see 
how many authors and how many publishers are running. click also on my uh, DMS service I have the same experience with the list of all the different uh, CQ clusters that are using the service and if I want to deploy one of those services on my uh, running cluster I can click on the install button same thing I can choose one or more of my CQ clouds running and just hit install so if I go back to my clouds and click on my CQ cloud here. I can go back to the installed packages and verify that my DMS service is right here installed successfully on all three machines. So that concludes the tour. For uh, any additional information, uh, we encourage you to uh, go to our uh, forum, which you can have access from the help button right under your name. Uh, we look forward to uh, hearing from you uh, on our forum, hopefully, uh, either by asking questions or providing your feedback. Thank you for uh, attending this uh, tutorial and hope to hear from you soon. Bye-bye.